This is a prophetic word from Jeremy as an audio recording. So I'm just going to play it to do this as well and uh hope you're having a really great day so i'll just pray for you first and then just uh share whatever the spirit of god uh brings to me so father we thank you for matthew we thank you for his life we thank you for his heart for you lord we thank you that he is a, a man who walks in your spirit he's a man who walks in the capacity of the supernatural and we just want to bless his life we Thank you, Lord, for all that he gives to other people and that you would encourage him as he's encouraged many people. Lord, that you would pour into him uh, even a tremendous edification, that he would be built up, he would be strengthened in you, and he would continue to run that race that you've purposed for him to run. And he would not grow weary in that race, but Lord, he would be consumed with the victory, the prize that awaits him in Jesus' name. You know, as I pray for you, Matthew, I just see a person who has this tremendous heart, this tremendous capacity to keep giving and, and giving and giving. And even the Lord wants you to know that he's seen the sacrifice. He's seen the times where, you know, it was difficult to do, where the demand was intense and you were facing your own struggles. And there were many things that you were trying to even overcome in your own life, but you gave what you could. And as you did that, you know, the Lord saw the sacrifice. He saw the things that you were able to do for others. He just wants to commend you that even though sometimes other people haven't always given thanks, it's like the 10 lepers that Jesus healed, you know, nine went away after the healing and only one came back to give thanks, to give glory. And sometimes it's a bit like that. And God understands that sometimes people don't appreciate uh, what you've done or what you've said or sown into their life. And they've taken it for granted, but God says, you know, keep your heart uh, before me and, and don't look at the results. Don't look to the uh, situations of what will be and, and what, effect did this have but continue to just do what god puts in your hands to do for there's many things that he wants to steady your hands in because i feel kind of there's a at times a vulnerability um that's there that the enemy would try to exploit at times as you share your vulnerabilities and not everybody's understood you not everybody's got what you were saying and they've misread or misinterpreted the various, various things that you've tried to share out of that vulnerability uh, but the lord again kind of says you know don't look at the outcome and what other people think but just be authentic as you've been just continue to be that person who would always uphold the cause of the kingdom who would always advance the cause of the kingdom in the various ministries that god has opened up to you i just see you having a real heart for the underdog uh people who've been marginalized people who've been pushed uh, to the side of the road so to speak i just see god giving you the the eyes to see these ones and to care for these ones even as jesus said to minister to the poor and to minister to those who are in prison and I just feel like God has allowed you to go through certain brokenness in your own life so that out of that would come compassion and empathy and that ability to really, uh, you know, minister to those uh, other people who are, you know, in need of, of, of care and who are in need of, um, you know, res restoration and repair. Because it's kind of like the word repair comes to mind. You know, there's people that God is repairing through your availability to him. Uh, he's repairing their life, their soul, their spirit, even their body at times. And um, he's allowing your words to bring healing. And I just feel like there's going to be a new unction of healing upon the words that you speak prophetically. I just feel like, you know, there's going to be that dimension of deliverance that comes upon your words and that people who receive those words will begin to experience a new reality of healing, a new reality of deliverance uh, through the words that you speak over their life. And you'll hear the testimony, the praise reports come back as people say, you know, when you said that word, I, I felt something shifted in my spirit and there was a deliverance of sorts or a healing manifestation of sorts.
you know, God has allowed you at times to walk a lonely path because I see kind of like there were people that said they were with you and for you and they kind of, a bit like with Jesus, you know, they went off and did their own thing and they abandoned you at times. And I feel like you've had to kind of weather the storm at times of other people's procrastinations and indecision and ambivalence and also their lack of commitment or loyalty and um, I just see it's been often a very lonely walk and many are the desires of your heart many are the things that you've lifted up to the God and said when are you going to provide this for me and provide uh, these uh, relationships and certain things for me that I've been asking about and, um, you know, it's almost like I see God just stretches you to the nth degree. And uh, I feel he's, he says, I don't do it to demoralize you. I don't do it to discourage you. But I do it because I'm putting in you such a persevering spirit, such an enduring spirit. Whereas in the past, it would have been easy to give up. It would have been easy to just throw the towel in. But God has made you a person of endurance, longevity. And that's his will, that you wouldn't just succumb to the oppression that the enemy would try and bring to you, but you would be a man who would rise up like Gideon as a mighty warrior at those times, even at those, you know, really pertinent times where you've been tested. And it's like, you know, everything's gone wrong, but God says, I've got your back. I have your back, and because I have your back, uh, things will work out for you, even though the calling has been challenging, even though, you know, even as James says, you know, as a testimony to the suffering, you know, and, and perseverance, you know, take the prophets who suffered in, in God's name, and there's a measure of that that comes with the prophetic call that you've received. There's a measure of that that comes because of the mantle and because of the things that God has allowed you to walk in, the things of brokenness, so that you would now minister, even at times out of a broken spirit. But God says, that's what makes it so powerful. When you minister from a place of brokenness, God is able to take that which you give and dispense and uh, multiply uh, the effect, the impact of it, in the person who receives it, because out of brokenness, you know, God um, releases his grace. Out of brokenness comes strength in God for those that receive those words. And um, I just see, you know, there's like a real maturity that you've kind of entered into, a season of maturity where you've known much, you've walked with the Lord for many years, you've grown in many different ways, and it's been marvelous. And it's almost like God matures you to new level and brings you up to a new stature where in the past, some of the things you said weren't heard, but I just kind of feel like it, as we move forward in this new maturity phase of your life, people will start to listen more, not just to the prophetic word, but also to the teachings, also to the sharings and your own like sound bites and your own uh, testimonies and your own observations of life and scripture and theology and, you know, all those sorts of things, practical um, dimension of what it means to be a believer. I feel like people will start to listen more and um, people will start to see that there's a new maturity in you. They'll sense it. And uh, it's come as like a promotion from the Lord for you tarrying in prayer, tarrying through the dark night of the soul where you felt like, you know, you're doing it all alone. And where is my friends? And where are my friends? And it felt like the dogs were circling and moving in for the kill at times as the enemy would send different people, but also uh, different forms of oppression and different kind of like you know, things of the mind that would attack you, strongholds, arguments, high things that would try and eradicate faith and hope in you. But the Lord is the restorer of hope. He's the one who brings hope to its full measure. And he says, I've got a new measure of hope for you because hope you know, in you will make the difference, which is ultimately Christ in you, the hope of glory, because hope deferred will make the heart sick. But God hasn't called you to heart sickness. He hasn't called you to depression. He's called you to hope and to be an ambassador of that hope to the very various people that he places uh, around you. 
I just see too such an evangelistic heart that's going to burst through at times, even in just public places, just even talking to people on the street and engaging, you know, maybe a taxi driver here or a, a cafe worker there or a supermarket attendant. I just see you kind of sharing and, and having this real preciseness with your evangelism and sharing words that have meaning and impact and bring conviction as well. And I see you doing that and consistently coming through as God moves you and brings an unction upon you to say and do and act according to his will. And, you know, I, I, I just kind of see too that there's going to be like such a bubbling forth, particularly at night. I just get this word, particularly at night, there's going to be this bubbling forth of God giving you kind of your own downloads for, you know, your content of books and articles and online statements that you'll write and things like that. God bringing revelation in the night season and there'll be such a, a stillness in your spirit for the Lord says, I want you to enter into my rest fully. And out of that rest will come uh, the stop of the competing voices and the clamoring and the restlessness of the soul as he teaches you what it means to enter into his rest. So I feel like you're also going to learn at a deeper level as you've stepped into this maturity, what it means to enter into his rest, what it means to minister out of a place of being still and knowing that he is God. So it's going to be, uh, that's going to be an exciting uh, learning curve for you, an exciting uh, adventure of faith. And I just, it's kind of like going to an amusement park. I just see God with you and you go together to this amusement park and it's wild and it's fun. It's like when you were a child, when you were a kid and you went to these places and you got on different rides and roller coasters and things and I just see you having hanging out with Jesus and having so much fun with him and he teaches you so much in laughter and he's going to teach you how to really laugh and to really have that carry that lightness in your heart lightness in your mind where even the pain and the the things of regret and the the stuff of the history of your life just kind of you know, the, the seriousness of it kind of gets lifted in laughter. I just hear the word lifted in laughter. And it's like God taking you through this amusement park and getting you to explore things. And it's an adventure. And it's so exciting because it brings such a, an influx of joy to your spirit that you just want to keep staying. That you don't want to leave that place. You don't want to go home. Even when the park closes, the amusement park, it's like, no, can we stay a bit longer? And it's like, well, you got to go back now to the real world but but in the real world too you're going to carry that adventurous spirit you're going to carry the joy from those times spent with God hanging out with Jesus as he shares his soul to you as he shares his life and you know the revelations that he has for you to walk in and uh, it, it's going to bring such such an excitement for you as, as well. Uh, all of these things as as God begins to, you know, really um, help you uh, really to, you know, overcome and to really uh, see the great things that God has for your situation uh, in the future. And, um, you know, it's, it's just see it's not a time to to worry about what the future will hold for you because God's got people he's put in place that are going to help even carry you at times when it's necessary, even support you and support your hands and your feet when you feel weary, when you feel downtrodden. But there's an empowerment that will come. And sometimes that empowerment will come through practical care from other people as they input, as they do practical things for you to make your situation in life that much easier, that much more enjoyable and uh, easier, you know? And um, so don't get ahead of God in that sphere of, of thinking about the future too much, but live in the moment. And as you learn to live in the moment, you'll begin to see the wonders of what there is. I just feel too prompted to say, you know, get out in nature as much as you can, because I feel like there's a restoration that will come to you, even as you walk through a park, even as you walk by a creek or a stream, even as you look at a flower in a garden and um, just enjoy, you know, the, the, the beauty, because it will connect you back to the creator in such a real way. Uh, and God will have moments of wonderment 
moments of reflection, but also he will speak to you out of the beauty that is all around you. He will speak to you through the, the chirping of a bird. He will speak to you through the sound of, you know, wildlife of different kinds, uh, you know, that you encounter and, and, and just the nature itself as the wind would rustle through trees and things. I feel like there's a refreshing that God will bring. Uh, I feel like there's also a coming to your life and accuracy in in your direction. Sometimes you've like got involved in many projects and assignments in your hand, kind of, you know, your finger in many pies, so to speak. And sometimes you've wondered, should I be doing this? Should I be associating with these people? Or is it time to move on? Is that season finished? And there's been different questions, but I feel like God's going to give you a real accuracy to know where to sow and which people to do life with and which people to walk away from and which assignments to say yes to and which ones to lay down and say that was last year or that was a previous season but I want to move forward now in the direction that God has uh, and I feel like God's going to help you to maximize the time that you have left on earth because I feel like you've asked God for that and you've prayed about that so God will bring an accuracy to your life in in um you know, what you need to do in order to really utilize these years ahead to really make sure that you are uh, doing what's needed, you know, uh, so you don't waste time with the wrong associations and things like that. But I, um, I just see to a measure of inner healing coming to your spirit as even things from the past and grief and things that have kind of held you down. I just see God beginning to minister in some new ways for he is near the broken in spirit and the contrite in heart and he will come near to you uh, in that hour and he will bind up that which is broken and um, just to keep trusting him uh, even for the desires of your heart and the things that you've asked him for that are very personal keep trusting him don't try and strive to make it happen just keep trusting him uh, without getting ahead and uh, only God knows when these things will happen but he has a way forward for you so father we thank you for Matthew we thank you for his heart for ministry we thank you for his prophetic mantle and the many words that he spoke spoken to many individuals over many years. Lord, we pray that even as he gives, as he sows in tears, Lord, he will reap in joy and there will be a harvest of encouragement, a harvest of joy for his life and peace uh, for every storm that he encounters and wholeness, Lord, for every situation where he feels somewhat disconnected or somewhat damaged, but Lord, that there would be a sense of wholeness, shalom, completeness over his life that we speak into his existence. We bless him, Lord, and we continue to think of the impact his ministry is having around the world. We thank you for that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, so that was a prophecy for me and I wanted to record it so I can uh, listen to it again.